1964, Sergeant Dave Van Norman was forced to resign from the RCMP when they discovered that he was homosexual. And then 57 years later, an out lesbian is the spokesperson for Canada's largest RCMP detachment. And as you heard in my wonderful intro, that spokesperson is me and Sergeant David Van Norman was my great uncle. So sadly, Dave passed away long before I became a member of the RCMP, but he was one of the reasons that I joined. And uh, he was part of what was known as the LGBT purge, which was a period that began in the 1950s, during which the Canadian government sought to fine and then expel LGBT people from the public service. They were labeled a threat to national security, uh, cast as subversives and likely targets for blackmail by communist regimes seeking classified information. And my uncle was devastated by his expulsion from the RCMP, but he really stayed proud of his service for his entire life. 27 years after his death, the government of Canada issued an apology for the purge. And my spouse, Melissa, and I got invited to attend the apology in Ottawa on behalf of Dave and my entire family. And I had received special permission to wear my red surge, which is the iconic uh, regimental uniform of the RCMP. Um, so we, uh, my wife and I went to Ottawa and attended a drill hall in front of us, row after row of metal chairs, perfectly aligned. Um, a podium stood silent with pride flags and the Canada flag. And we were sitting shoulder to shoulder with people who um, had been waiting for years, purge victims, uh, human rights advocates and family members. Who, they had been fighting for this apology. And I was the lone surge in the room. As, as the prime minister tearfully detailed the abuses of the purge and other acts of discrimination against the LGBT community, my wife, Melissa, reached down and grabbed my hand. Um, it, it was a very emotional time and she squeezed my hand, but I sat utterly stone-faced because I, I really didn't wanna show emotion in my surge. But then the prime minister started talking about the fruit machine and the fruit machine was a device that was procured by the RCMP as uh, a method of detecting homosexuals. So it was supposed to be based on pupil response. And the way that it would work was that they would show a subject a homoerotic image, and if their pupils reacted, then they were homosexual. And it was an RCMP sergeant that called it the fruit machine. But it was never used. The, the fruit machine was actually never used, but it has come to symbolize the type of investigations that were done during the purge. And as I heard the prime minister talk about that, I, I could feel tears starting to run down my cheeks. And I felt a feeling that I had never experienced in my uniform before. It was like just a terrible feeling uh, where I could feel almost like every eye in the room was burning a hole right through my scarlet tunic. And I realized that it was shame. Because as a family member of someone who was part of the purge, of course, I felt upset about what had been done like to my uncle, but now sitting there as a uniformed police officer, part of the RCMP, I felt ashamed about what we had done to other people. In that moment, I realized that some of the people for them in that room my uniform symbolized the discrimination that they had suffered in the purge. After the apology was over, I actually had several media inquiries and I had given some interviews and reporters would ask me, oh, how do you reconcile being a member of the RCMP with your family's history? And you know, I had a lot of different answers that I gave at that time. But the truth was, is that I actually hadn't reconciled it. Um, how could I? I? I mean, that realization that I had in the apology was something brand new for me. As a, a child, you know, during my childhood, what happened to Dave wasn't openly spoken about. And so what I knew about um, him and about the purge had come mostly from eavesdropping on hushed conversations of adults in my family. And what I had heard then was that Dave was out of the force because being gay was a crime and that homosexuality was shameful. 
But thankfully, <laughs> the apology wasn't the end for me. It was actually a beginning because it really motivated me to learn more about what happened to Dave and also to learn more about the role of the RCMP in the purge. So I started to gather as much information as I could. And truthfully, the apology actually gave me courage to connect with my family um, and ask questions that I'd always been too afraid to ask. And it also connected me with other victims of the purge, people who had known Dave. And then over time, actually, people who saw me in the news, they began to call, they wrote me emails and sent me letters. Um, many of them expressed their own feelings about the LGBT purge and you know, their own experiences. They too sought closure. They were seeking their own reconciliation. I actually remember one particular phone call was from uh, an RCMP veteran in his 80s. And um, he told me he didn't know my uncle, but he had seen me on the news. And he was mindful of another fellow that he actually knew who was a victim of the purge. And all these years he had carried with him so much regret that he hadn't done more, that he hadn't stood up for this fellow. But then just seeing me on the news, being accepted by the RCMP actually made him feel better. So every connection taught me more about the purge and helped me to heal and to reconcile. And my feelings of shame that I had felt over time started to be replaced by motivation and inspiration. And then I also found that through learning about all the historical injustice that I started to gain a greater appreciation of my circumstance today. I definitely accept that I can't change what's happened in our past, but I can control what happens in the future and I can help design what's happening in the future. I, we own this present today and together we can create what we want for the future. So today as a lesbian and a member of the RCP, I do share my family's story and what I've learned about discrimination in the LGBT community, but in also in others. Over the years, the culture of Canada has changed and the RCMP and what we believe about diversity and inclusion has also changed for the better. And my ability to reconcile came about as a result of the understanding which came about because of those connections with people and um, really compassion for our shared experience. So if you ask me again, how do I reconcile being an RCMP officer with my family's history, then I will tell you that it's by finding a way to carry on just like my uncle did. Because my family's history is my inspiration to be the police officer that I am today. And that's one that believes that all people must be treated with dignity and respect. So don't get stuck in shame. Seek to understand I'll never change the past, but I strive to change the future. And hearing my family's story, I hope that you will too. Thank you guys so much for your time.